moving on to um, Avanti West Coast and the story that hit the headlines last week, um, Nigel, because if you remember about the this I menopause uh, gift bag. Um, and we uh, discussed it on the last week's show, how this all came about. So it, it appeared to start with a tweet uh, with Aslef um, tweeting a picture of the card inside that detailed its contents, um, including, for example, you know, tissue if you're feeling a bit emotional, paperclip to help you keep it all together and jelly baby in case you feel like biting someone's head off. And as left called the packs a, an insulting gimmick, national media got all excited and it, it kind of all got a bit of a hand. So we thought it'd be really useful to get some actual experts on this subject to come and chat to us um, about it. I think people are really interested in, yeah. in this. I think there's more to this story than met the eye. So we're delighted to say um, that we're able to welcome um, Amanda Young, who's the head of employee experience from Avanti West Coast, and Amantha King, who is a leading workplace menopause consultant, um, who wrote a brilliant post on LinkedIn in response to the media furore that we we all saw. We all caught really our eye, did that, didn't it? Did so. Welcome to Amanda and Amantha. You're Thank most you. you're most welcome you. on Green Signals. Can I also apologise in advance of the inevitability of calling one of you by the wrong name? <laughs> yes. W- welcome to the world of Nigel. Right. Okay. Okay. Look, let's get let's let's get straight into it. Um, let's let's set the scene if we can, um, Amanda, um, for Avanti West Coast. Could you just give us a sort of bit? Just set the scene. What was the background to this? How how did this um, this initiative come about? So the initiative um, was an idea of one of our gender network um, colleagues, um, a woman who is um, going through perimenopausal and menopausal symptoms at the moment, um, who um, was putting together um, a support program for the business around menopause, the first of its kind, actually, um, across the West Coast and um, took place in July last year. Um, and her idea was to to develop these um, bags as a takeaway at the end of the event. So we had colleagues, um, including men, women from our frontline drivers, onboard staff and HQ who were invited to these drop-in sessions around menopause. And um, these takeaway items, these, these menopause bags were given at the end of the session as a reminder of the support that is available, um, but also um, kind of as a reminder that some of the symptoms that we sometimes see um, around menopause are common. So so not in any way to kind of trivialise um, some of those symptoms, but as a reminder that there is help available and there is so- support available. So they were given out at the end of the sessions. And our understanding was that this was this has been quite well received. You mentioned this was in July last year, so this has been going for quite a while. Yeah, they have been really well received. And I, and I think it's it, it's because of the context around it. Um, these were not given out in isolation. Um, these were not given out as part of a company policy. These were given out at the end of a session when people had the opportunity to come together, listen, talk, share with each other. So they were seen as, as, as more of a, a takeaway and support right. that people were available and listening. Um, we've had, you know, it's important to say that we've had really, really good response from the support groups and the support around menopause pause um, to date with people saying that they're really kind of grateful for people volunteering their time in the business as well to kind of support and offer okay. advice to others. So they have been quite well received. Were, well, I guess you must have been rather surprised. Um, and I wondered whether you're actually quite irritated um, when Aslef posted what they did on social media. Did you have any idea that that was coming? Have they shared any concerns with you prior to that? I was also surprised it was it was not a new initiative, that it had been it was quite, quite old, quite an old, not old. It was a mature scheme. It wasn't a, a new one. Yeah. Um, no, we, you know, as far as, as far as I'm aware, there hasn't been any um, kind of conversations with Aslef around this, and it'd be it'd be kind of wrong for me to speculate as to reasons why and why now, um, especially as there've been no complaints internally um, either from. The, the time that we were first introduced in July last year, or since all of the media coverage around this, um, if anything, quite the opposite um, in terms of the written feedback we've had from from colleagues. So, um, yeah, um, am I angry? No, it's 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 always disappointing, isn't it, to receive 
receive um, kind of negative, negative feedback. But, you know, as a learning organization, we've got to take that on the chin and, and recognize that this is part of a journey. You know, we, we are on a journey to become, I mean, we, we say, you know, a menopause friendly organization, but this is about being menopause competent. And, you know, there is not a one size fits all for everybody. And, you know, if there was a magic pill around engagement or inclusion, then, you know, we'd all be very rich. You know, the fact is that we, we've got to adapt our approach to suit the many different people that we have in our business. This was one approach and it just gives us pause for thought, I suppose, to kind of reflect on our that, approach going forward. That's a perfect moment, right, just at that point. And um, we say to, to bring Amantha in. Uh, so, Amantha, you're um, a workplace menopause consultant. C- can you just, just explain what that actually involves kind of you know what what what's what are the things that you do when you're supporting people with this stuff okay so may i just say thanks so much for having me on and and also i'd just like to frame this from a personal context as well um that i am a postmenopausal woman um i became perimenopausal at 36 with a two-year-old i was perimenopausal wow. for 16 years because i think that's that's why the reaction we got that reaction. But to tell you what I actually do. So I used my menopause experience. I, I'm formally trained in the pharmaceutical industry. I used to sell hormone replacement therapy. Uh, little did I know that th- this would become my reality uh, all these <laughs> years later, but I'm, I'm very glad it is. So I go into businesses to create competent menopause cultures. And I'm really clear about that word. Mm. I don't like the process of accreditation. Um, accreditation, uh, you know, my husband says to me, you, you can accredit concrete life jackets. It doesn't mean they're fit for purpose. The reality <laughs> is we we go into businesses and we help raise awareness, first of all, open up the conversation. You know, when you look at data, we know that people just aren't talking about menopause. Ninety percent mm-hmm. of people with female biology say they will not speak to their manager about this topic. So there is a veil of silence. So we go in and we remove that veil through awareness. And we have three step programs called Create, Develop, Build, where we create awareness from the top down. So literally from the CEO right down to people at the front line. We then develop managers so that they can have compassionate, open conversations, which are EDI sensitive. So equality, diversity and inclusive. Um, And we also have menopause champions, people in organisations that can be that signposter and that supporter. And then lastly, we finish with guidance. And it really is last because most people only lean into guidance when something has gone wrong. And most of us know that policies either sit on a dashboard or sit in a drawer or on a computer file. They rarely get used unless something has gone wrong. So we're really passionate about that because um, I think there is a lot of um, narrative, a lot of erroneous narrative around what menopause is. um, uh, And we very much go in to say what it is and what it isn't. And I never advocate a fan on a desk, not ever. Because that just (laughs) that that is in its in itself quite insulting. to to people and we are currently working in the rail industry if I told you that trains are taken out of service because people have menstrual flooding and menstrual flooding is where a month's worth of menstrual blood comes down in a matter of hours or over a 24-hour period we have actually got evidence that a train was taken out of service ambulance crews were called and staff were actually off sick for two weeks because people haven't understood what it is they're dealing with and i think that's where the competency comes in so like i say i understand that avanti have had uh, an accredited program of menopause awareness i honestly believe it maybe didn't go far enough which i know is uh, is another point it didn't go far enough in helping those very amazing volunteers who i celebrate massively which is why i put my post out i just don't think they were supported enough to go do you know what sense check could anyone have a problem with this, whether internally or externally? And I'm sure even though maybe people haven't said, there might be some people like myself who, like I say, having had a 16-year experience, might have thought that that just trivialised the topic a little bit. Okay, so, so one of the things that was great about your LinkedIn post, that you, it was so balanced. So you were very – the first thing you did was praise Avanti for the for the great work that um, uh, you know Amanda and the team have done. But then you also said it was a bit of a missed opportunity. Could, could you just, um, you know, in sort of summary, just explain a little bit what, what you meant by that? 
okay, so in my opinion, and first of all, I still stand by that. I think hats off to Avanti. You are... Um, I said one in 30, you know, 30% of organizations are doing some work around this. It's actually worse than that. It's um, CIPD data. I rechecked it yesterday. It's about 24%. Um, so I think the fact there was an opportunity, I think it maybe didn't go far enough, and I'll tell you why. I think it would have been really helpful to have a very um, a stakeholder group, someone who could oversee what this group were doing so that, you know, it has to pass the red face test internally, but externally as well. Um, I'm, I'm working with Helen Tomlinson, who is the national menopause champion assigned by the government, and we're looking for best case studies. We're looking for best practice. And best practice, as Amanda rightly says, this is a learning opportunity. I guess the learning opportunity is how do we protect volunteers who are giving their own time so that this sort of thing doesn't happen? If we had been involved in that project, we actually give our menopause champions directories. We give them um, signposts and we would have said, let's just poll a few people and see how this might land. Let's give some advice. Let's give some internal checks and balances, which the rail industry are very, very good at doing. I think that is the missed opportunity. And so what I want to say to businesses, it's not enough to do a, a quick menopause webinar. It's not enough to do a few leaflets and posters. If we're really going to educate people so that this sort of thing doesn't happen again, people actually under, need to understand from the top. So CEOs, senior managers, senior leadership teams, Someone should have been checking this, and I think that is the missed opportunity. So, <clears throat> recognise then that uh, Avanti West Coast do deserve credit for at least addressing this and with some enthusiasm, clearly. Um, I mean, what would you suggest specifically should have been done differently? Was it something as simple as somebody in the room when the discussion was going on saying, hang on, um, you know, how's this going to play more widely? It's the, if you like, the challenging, the sceptical voice in the room uh, did did the meeting just get a bit carried away by its own enthusiasm? I don't know what what could have been done differently for a better outcome. So, from my perspective, I I believe it comes down to the original accreditation. I believe if you're buying training in, is that training going to give a level of competency to the people who are going to use it? Um, I've been training all my working life and training means nothing unless you can see it in action, see what people actually do with it, because that's where you gauge competency. And that's why I still stand by the, the term uh, menopause friendly accreditation. What does that mean? Um, you know, menopause competence means that we have people being supported. We don't have people going to tribunals. We have people feeling like they're valued in an organisation. I mean, things like this, I, I would have said I'd have rather have seen that in the, the gift bag that was sent out. This is by the Make Menopause Matter charity. It's a fantastic 32-page um, informative document about menopause that anybody can pick up. It's completely free. It's available by a QR code. It's got symptom trackers in it, and it's been written by professionals. And so it's those sorts of things that we would have been advising. And we don't just leave businesses. So in, in the work that we do, we stay with our menopause champions for 12 weeks and we do a one year refresher so that they do have that, that competent listening voice. They're not just left to their own devices. We want to, we want to cultivate creativity, but in a way that keeps everybody safe. So Amanda, I mean, just hearing this, I mean, look, I, it, I, I, the message I'm getting out of all this is Avanti's done a fantastic job, yeah. right? A really, a, Agreed. A, you, when you look at what is going on elsewhere, uh, you know, there's clearly a passion, there was clearly a desire, I mean, you're supporting your people, which is brilliant. What what now, when you kind of, I suppose for your next um, pile of stuff, I mean, uh, that, that you do, the, ne the next initiatives that you do, Will you will you build some of this in perhaps, or sort of look to to do it in a slightly different way? I mean, presumably have, uh, every every opportunity is a learning opportunity, isn't it? Yeah, it is, and um, it's it's great to um, to kind of hear the 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 range of um, support um, that Amantha um, has has kind of shared there, and and I think it's important to put this into context. So when we talk about menopause friendly accreditation, we're on a journey to look at what are the specific elements that we need to kind of achieve and reach. It's less about the accreditation; that's just the end product, isn't it? That's mm -hmm. I think I think I'm, I'm totally with you, Amantha, in 
in having these shiny awards or accreditations do little um, in some ways to to really um, uh, kind of make clear the kind of environment um, that, that we have in place within a business. Um, but what it has done in looking at that accreditation process is it's allowed us to have a look at the way we communicate. It's allowed us to look at some of the support mechanisms we have in place. And for an organization um, kind of starting out, because, you know, Let's be fair that, you know, we are quite young to this. It's not even been one full year that we've been doing some support around this. It's given us a bit of a guide and a framework. And, um, you know, you talked about menopause matters. You talked about those leaflets. All of that information is available um, at our support sessions. So um, there was access to books. There's access to leaflets. Um, there has been talks. There has been web, um, webinars. We haven't introduced any formal training. Um, you know, I, I think, you know, my view is pace does always equal progress. We have to make sure that we are involving people as we, we, we kind of go along um, this journey. So all of that is available. Um, and also we have a menopause library. So, so you know, um, colleagues can come, whether it is for their own kind of personal education and awareness to support others as managers within our business or actually individuals themselves that are going through, um, through um, the menopause or have perimenopausal symptoms. Um, that is available um, to them as part of that. Um, I mean, you, you talk about things, Amantha, like like fans and things, um, we've listened to what people have said. So we have a range of different support available. So if somebody does want um, a portable fan, if somebody, you know, a member of any of our, um, our, our colleagues or somebody who is working on a train and they felt feel that's useful, that support that we'll be able to provide. Um, but I think it is that approach that, as we said, there isn't a one size fits all. This is a perfect time for us to stop and review how far we've come. And, you know, I'm proud of the support and the volunteers that we have in our business and we're really wanting to drive this forward. This is not a top-down initiative or policy just to look good. This is about it being meaningful and people within our business sharing their lived experience. And, you know, some may use humour. Um, so I can see how I'm um, kind of looking at this and looking at the bags that, you know, it, 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 you know, for some people that 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 feels that it's some way trivialised it. Um, I think there's an opportunity to review that, but that was never the intention. Um, you know, we have reached out to menopause experts. We are looking at the range of support we're, we're, we're offering. I think this is a perfect time to start um, thinking about what we what we do in this space and, and really building on um, some of the webinars, some of the talks the private safe space that we've created for colleagues to come together to talk, to continue with the support sessions and just kind of reflect on and enhance um, the journey that we've already started to become more inclusive as an employer, really. Amantha, yeah. um, how sort of, I mean, look, in, in 40 years as a journalist and 28 years on rail, this is the first conversation in business terms I've had about the menopause. Um I mean, how widespread in the rail industry is the sort of initiatives that um, that Amanda and Avanti West Coast are doing? Are they are they are they are they sort of spearheading um, this, or are there other companies doing it? How how many companies are active? So um, I can't speak for anyone else, but we're working with two uh, currently. Um, we're working for a provider for rail in Wales, and. What I would like to say, I'd just like to come back on what Amanda said. Amanda, I think it is absolutely brilliant. I love the fact that your organisation is so engaged. Um, I think I just feel for them, really. I really feel for them, really feel for them. But to, to come back to, to that question, um, we are seeing, and this is maybe something that I just want to put into the mix, which is that actually menopause doesn't just affect women and people with female biology. We see a massive impact on men in rail. Mm -hmm. uh, we're working with a rail provider with 4,000 employees and we are providing menopause sessions for men. We're providing andropause sessions for men because yeah. uh, we've had a lot of testimony. We've had a lot of uh, managers. We're doing a, a, a really big process of training managers and most managers will tell you that the targets for recruiting women into rail are, are tough. Um, I think currently 16% of all, all rail are women. So it's ambitious targets. Now, what we know is the biggest group that are leaving are the 45 upward group. And there's oh, the, the, it's a leaky bucket. We have got people leaving this industry en masse. Um, and we don't have enough women and people with female biology coming into the business. You'll notice even the terminology I'm using, women, people, people with female biology. 
This is very, very important. But I think if I just give you a small, a small story, which is that actually we know that um, some drivers um, have um, have actually confided in the safe spaces that Amanda talks about, um, have broken down in our sessions saying how they don't want to go home of an evening. They're not sleeping. So we have reduced levels of alertness. We have drivers, male drivers with reduced levels of alertness because they are sleeping next to a partner who isn't sleeping, who's got the covers off, covers on. They're, they're going to the toilet at night. Windows are open. Windows are closed. The, the relationship is breaking down. And we had a very sad story quite recently in the rail last year where a male member of staff took his life because his relationship with his wife was breaking wow. down due to menopause. Good heavens. So I want to really, if I do one thing in active service for the rail industry today is to say menopause affects everybody 100%, whether you are male or female. Um, it touches every corner of the rail industry. And if I say a couple of things that just shock me, you know, freight trains have no toilets on them. So if you are a woman who is menstruating, where do you use that facility? Most toilets, uh, um, people are struggling to have the equipment in toilets. Lots of new trains don't have toilets large enough, let alone a wash basin. And when I was on Great Western Railway last week, returning from Wales, I actually said to a guard who looked so embarrassed when I asked, but hats off to him, he did sit and speak to me. I said, if I was to have a menstrual bleed right now, what would I do? And he said, I have no idea. So we have companies who are having training, but it's the application of, of that training. And so I really do want people to know everybody in rail is affected by menopause. Maybe we just don't yeah. hear enough of these root true stories. Well, look, I, 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 thank you so much for your time. We're going to have to uh, draw it to a close there. But that that is, as Nigel said, that's a subject which I think Many, many people listening to this, that'll be the first time they've yeah. heard any of that. And and hopefully, if we've achieved one thing, as, as, as you said, Amantha, it's just bringing that to a wider audience and, and it affects everybody. So it's not just uh, for one group uh, on the railway, it's, it affects everybody. I've learned a huge amount. I know Nigel has. And just wanted to say once again, Amantha King, Amanda Young, thank you so much for your time. Just saying again, hats off to Avanti. You, that is a, yeah. you, learn, you learn so we now know what really happened, um, but also I think we all know that we can uh, learn from this and do, do other things in the future. Thank you so Absolutely. much. Absolutely. Thanks for having Thanks. me. Pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you.